going on, man? I had to get up with you, man. I see you running around all through the Instagram yeah. reels. You know, I'm hitting them with this. Tell them thou sent you. I had to get up with you and bring you on the platform, man. We had to let these people know what this whole tell them what thou sent you is about, man. So what's popping, my guy? First of all, I want to say thanks, Shay, man. It's a big honor being on the dirty side, man. Um, 100%, just, man. We try to keep the culture going and keeping it lit. Now, I got to tell you, the shit that you got going on, the sweatsuits, too. Are those one of them? Yeah, amazing. Let's talk Thank about you. the sweatsuits. Thank you. Thank yes, you. let's Thank talk you. about the sweatsuits. The sweatsuits look fire, man. Who designed those sweatsuits? Um, so me and my boy John Sebastian, we collabed on it. Um, I had an idea to bring the boats to life. As you can see, it's a hundred percent. It's not. It's not um paste on or anything like that. It was great, greatly manufactured, and um, it's doing good. It's selling out the stores. Hundred percent. One thing I got to say about you, man. Always from the first time I met you, you've been about your business. Been about your hustle, you know, always been on top, man. I got to give that to you, man. So now that you got this, I'm um, telling that I'll send you thing here, man. We had to bring you to the table. First, I want to start from where it all started with, uh, just so people could get a little bit familiar with you. When did you jump off the porch and where did you jump off the porch at? Let's start from there just so they know who exactly who we talking to and where you're from. Let's start from there. Well, um, I'm originally from Jamaica. I moved to New York, Mount Vernon, New York. Um, I'm from the east side of Mount Vernon, four square miles. Everybody knows one of the most dangerous places in the United States of America, probably in the world. Um, it was rough growing up, but we made it through. I started off doing music. Uh, I jumped off the porch at 12 years old, if you want to really be technical. 12 years old, you know, we was doing things that a lot of people wasn't doing. You know, uh, that was sixth grade, and my life took a, 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 the wrong turn at that time where we was just, you know, trying to figure out life. We were kids. I was speaking to one of my boys about two days ago, and I told him, you know, something very dramatic happened to us, and we took it as a learning experience and started uh, moving around with it and um, made it a career a career for a while. And... um that kind of showed us where our heart was, what kind of people we were, you know? Because most times, especially as a young kid, if something dramatic happens to you, you know, you would either go the other way or stay inside, you know? So we went the other way. And um, now I just want to tell everybody that's just not the right way to go. Right. You know, we just, we didn't have any anybody smart enough to kind of, dictate our lives and kind of show us the right path when we was younger you know we was following people that we was thought was ogs doing the wrong thing and um i did the wrong thing too long in my life and i just want to bring the right the right sunshine to people right now that's that's why i'm here shay that's what the i like that i like that i like about. that definitely i like that okay so let's start from the mount vernon new york thing as a uh moving to mount vernon from jamaica and everything because yes you are 100 percent right especially in the 90s mount vernon was one of the most dangerous places and still to this day in america so let's start from mount vernon because we had a few dudes on here from mount vernon that was on the platform and they're all you know them dudes uh, you know if you want to actually i don't really bring people on the on the platform who, who, who people can't do their research on so I want to start from there because uh, we had Spunk Big go on here. You know, we had uh, Trump uh, on here, Trump Turner. And we Trump also is from my block. 100%. And we also had on here M. Dot Porter. All of these guys. M. Dot Porter, really Porter used to live on my block. I know M. Dot Porter when he was future. Uh, before future. 100%. 100%. Now I wanted to get there because according to them, in which, you know, me, I live not too far from Mount Vernon, so I know about the area myself, so I know exactly what you guys are talking about. Mount Vernon being so legendary in the game with the whole hip-hop scene and, and also in the street game um, back in those days, which, if you ask me, it started it all, Mount Vernon, New York. So what was it like growing up in Mount Vernon? Uh, to kind of piggyback off of what you said, uh, Mount Vernon is very, very legendary, and I'm from the most legendary block as far as industry-wise. 
Heavy D lived right next door to me. Pete Rock lived up the block from me. And Trump lives down the block. Um, as far as music is, is concerned, and Porter uh, lived on the block for a while. So as far as music is concerned, uh, my block kind of sums it up uh, in the history of music for Mount Vernon. Um, a great place just to learn and, and to see, to see what you can make out of nothing. Right. Um, you got to be smart. And you got to be strong to come from there. Right. It's called money earning Mount Vernon for a reason. And a true fact about Mount Vernon that a lot of people don't know. Brooklyn wouldn't be as big as it is without Mount Vernon. Dare I say it. Because Puff Daddy is originally from Mount Vernon that really lives right around the corner from us on Brookside. And he made Biggie Smalls who he is. And Biggie Smalls kind of shaped Brooklyn to what it is today. 100%. I like that. Yeah, I like that. All right, so um, the whole, what people don't understand too also about you is also why I think you was perfect for the platform also was that, they don't know, you was an artist prior to the Tell Them That Thou Sent You. Yeah, Thousand Years. You, know, you had song French Montana, you had on the, uh, what, what DVD was that back in the day with French? Uh, cocaine City. Cocaine, cocaine City. City. You was on Cocaine City. I, mean, I saw you shooting pool with French Montana and everything yeah. about and everything like that. Let's talk about those days. What was it like in those days? You know, being an artist. I know you said you changed now, but yeah. those days of being an artist, French Montana days, and just knowing niggas in the game. How was it like? Um, you know, just being in the game. You know, like you know, coming from Mount Vernon, being in the game. Come on, let's talk about that. You know, nobody gets, being, let's keep it real. You knew French before it was French. Uh, yeah, French used to French used to shoot me. French used to come to the block with the cameras and shoot me. Uh, you know, French, you know, I, I was that dude back then. I'm still that dude now. You know, I was just more on my music zone. You know, uh, a lot of people piggybacked off of my style back then. A lot of people, you know, uh, I used to give everybody my CDs. I was up in Kevin Lyle's in the office. Um, you know, rest in peace, Mike Lyle. Uh, I forgot his name. Uh, Lighty, Chris Lighty. Chris Lighty. Rest in peace, Chris Lighty. I was in the office. I gave him my CDs. He told me I was too raw. You know, I was just too real for the industry back then. Um, I was all over the place, man. Everybody got a CD. I did a great big show with Buster Rhymes at the Palladium one time. Uh I had a barber shop right next to Funk Master Flex. A lot of people don't know that. Because so it's I used crazy to see... that you're naming these names because I had a guy on here that was um Johnny Cash on here two days two days ago that we were doing an interview. I don't know if you see this on the page, but he was talking about Chris Light. He said Chris Lighty was with his group in Brooklyn when it's funny, but he said that Fat Joe and some dudes that he was with uh that they were doing the show with. Some guys from Brooklyn wind up beating up his group and giving his mans and them a buck fifty in the face. Chris Lighty runs out the back door. Then Buster Rhymes stole his song back in '93. This is nasty. One hundred percent. Roll that clip. I mean, uh, that that it was vulnerability after that, man. It was no bueno. All deals is off. So now the video comes out. He's like, "Which one of you stole my flow? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo." Throw you niggas right out the window. You know you know the rules. You got to pay your dues. That's... That's not going to It's not going to sell, Brad Drain. It's not going to sell. So, like I said, this is a legend, bro. You know what I'm saying? He didn't... He, he, didn't, he, he didn't get Brad Drain's. He, he, he didn't get nasty, no, the hoods of misbehavior. He didn't get uh, DNA. He didn't get... He got mixed elements, so it was they call, and, and they words was, they felt that it caused more harm than help than come at them sideways. But this is when we knew the game was changing. You look at the stables that, that, that you, we, you bring up Chris Lighty and Buster Rhymes and them. I just had a dude telling me two days ago that these guys almost tried to get him. This is crazy. <laughs> Yo, shout out to Fat Joe, too. Um, you back shout out to Fat Joe. Back in the days, I see Fat Joe outside of uh, Sue's rendezvous. 
and I gave him uh, my CD. He called me like four in the morning. He was rapping it back to me. He said, yo, man, listen, this is the greatest shit I ever heard. I got to let it marinate. And I'm going to call you back tomorrow. You know, Fat Joe, shout out Fat Joe. Fat Joe wanted to sign me for a while. You know, um, we was going back and forth. Fat Joe used to always pick up the phone calls for me. Joe, if you see this, man, um, that's me. Tell him that I sent you, man. I changed it, man. I'm motivating the world now, man. No, that's good stuff. No, this is a good, this good content right here. No, okay, so let's talk about that. A lot of people didn't get a chance to go to Sue's rendezvous. Ain't all of this. Oh, let's yeah, talk that was about our being from Mount Vernon. From Mount Vernon. Vernon. Yeah, let's talk about being from Mount Vernon and having all the goats. We're going to get to you. We're going to get to uh, Dump Down Sent You. But hold on, we got to paint the picture first. Let's talk about Mount Vernon, New York, Sue's Rendezvous. The Tuesday, Industry Night. Legendary. Legendary. What Legendary. was it like in Sue's? What was it like in Sue's? Oh, man. Movie. One time I uh, was in Sue's, I think Big Me spent a million dollars. What? <laughs> you lying. We was in there? I was in there. He came in there with 20 dudes with big ass bags, and they all had probably like 100,000 in the bags. What? What was that like? What? I mean, that's like, damn, this nigga coming to the hood. This is like this. It was hey, love. Yo, what Shay, was that like? Hey, yo, Shay, a lot of people can't say this. A lot of people can't say this. And I put this on everything I love. Me, your brother, and J Class was moving around so heavy. BMF stopped us one day in Miami in the back of the club and said, man, y'all getting a lot of money. I see y'all everywhere I go. That's a fact. Me. Me. Girl, I was with y'all one night. And Shay. Then you, I, you probably was with there, okay? And the day mentions, let's let's touch on that. Uh, with with BMF, shout out to BMF. That day, I can't lie, we was like twenty deep. They were only three deep. Yeah, yeah. But they did have mad bottles. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Too many bottles that three niggas can't drink. Yes, yes, yes. One hundred percent. So I, I can say. That the story that you're telling about them seeing you in Miami could be true and is definitely true because I did see them that night. And this had to be 2005 and six. Ask your brother, ask J Class. No, I believe it. I believe it. All right. So going through all of these things, man, you know, sitting in the club, BMF, you know, the Sue's rendezvous life, because Sue's, I can't lie. I wasn't from Mount Vernon, but what. The reason I know Mount Vernon, to be honest with you, was at a young age of knowing, like, yo, you got to go to Sue's. You got to go to Sue's. You, you got to go to Sue's. You got to go to Sue's. So that's what I'm saying. Did you meet a lot of these industry people in Sue's? Uh, well, when we was or in moving Sue's, around New York City, period. Just moving around New York City, period. And to be honest with you, Shay, when we was moving around and Sue's and stuff like that, we was just giving out CDs. We were meeting people and stuff like that, but we were just hungry, looking for attention from these kind of people. Uh, when we really started meeting people is when, you know, me and you got together and we took over the city. Right. No, that's true. No, that's true. A hundred percent. No, because uh, the game was nasty then, man. The game was definitely nasty. That's 100% nasty. 100%. All right, so let's talk about let's go back to the music business for a second because this is a lot. You just I wonder, you know, a lot of people. I don't know. I don't even know if people that you even around now even know this because you don't really talk about it at all. Nah, I don't. It's something but I don't. Really one of them guys was like the next up. Yeah, uh, you know when I when I go to Mount. Um, New York, a lot of times they say, man, I can't believe you let French take your spot like that. <laughs> I'm telling you, dude, um, when I first met you, I already knew, like, okay, that was that. Your name was already ringing on the mixtapes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know what I'm sure. saying? Yeah, I was on all the big mics. Shout out to Big Mike. You know, he, he, <laughs> he, he, he held me down a lot back then. Um, shout out to K Slay. K Slay, he used to always shout me out, give me a little plays here and there. Rest in peace, K Slay. Back. Um, you know, it was just it was just a movement with mixtapes and stuff like that. And um, you know, it was all about 
advertisement and getting the city to support me. You know, Jada Kiss one time he 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 did the little um subliminal uh a lot of niggas. I wanted to ask is. you about that because the only reason why I never asked you that ever in life was because you know Kiss is my man. Yes. I didn't know if that was subliminal. I didn't know if it was you know, but it's like it's kind of like he knew I was Kiss knew. Who else Kiss is a knew I was coming? There's only one was thousand in. <laughs> yeah, Kiss knew I was coming, so he he threw it out there to a shot. So you know, it was promoting me. So everybody exactly. could understand. It was that's the way I took it as. That it wasn't. Was it wasn't nothing negative. It, it wasn't, wasn't nothing negative. negative. You know what I'm saying? It was something to let to let me know, like I see you, little nigga. You know what I'm saying at the time, but you know what I'm saying, but. You know, my career took uh, took a turn for what it was. You know, I was around some people. A lot of my friends went to jail when we was at a height of of our career. You know, what I'm saying a, a lot of a lot of my friends went to jail when I was at the height of my career. Um, if I was with seven people, six of them went to jail. I was probably the only one out uh, for for a long time. So, you know, that kind of discouraged me. And then now, you know, that's why I'm kind of doing the um, tell them thou sent you things because there's a lot of motivation I got to give to the people because I've seen a lot and um, I've been through a lot. And I just want you to know that, you know, sometimes you're going to have a plan with people and it might fall through, but you could do it alone. Right. That's a fact. No, 100 percent. No, no, man, I, I, I wanted to talk about that, man. I wanted to talk about that. I just wanted to paint the picture a little bit, you know, yeah. first. On, you know, nah, you know, I I have no 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 problems with my past. You know, my past is what made me who I am today. Hundred percent. But, um, but I glorify now on the positive moments because that's what's gonna bring me closer to where I need to go in life. Yeah, because so, today you got on a sweatsuit. Normally they see you on the gram. You got the shirt and tie on. You know yeah. what I mean? You looking like straight success. Let's talk about this, man. Yeah, so today the reason why is because you know I'm I know I'm on your platform, which is a big platform. So I also wanted to give the people a piece of this merchandise that I know that he would love to have. You know, um Tell them Thou sent you and where we going with Tell Them Thou sent you is just I want to give advice to the youth to let them know, you know, just the other day I was 20 years old and now I'm 41, about to be 42. Time flies, so do the right thing Back. with your time. Yeah. And one thing I got to congratulate you on, too, is, man, it's got to say, it's just it's on, besides the success and having your own company and everything and growing, is that you're a full-time dad. That is crazy. That you got the boys with you 24-7. That's not easy. And That's this is what people don't understand. They think that you know, having them at a younger age, having them at an older age is harder because they want to move more and do more, you know, these are decisions like now, and you're at an age, like as a father, you got to make, like, okay, do I let them go here? Do I let them go there? You know, when they're kids, it's strictly no. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, yeah. I got to say, man, that's not easy. So, you know, it, how is that being a full time dad? By yourself well, like that. Well, I want to first of all say shout out to all the full time moms and shout out to all the full time dads out there. It's a very hard job. Um, when you're doing it with someone, uh, it kind of takes off half the load. Obviously, everyone knows that. Um, but when you're doing it by yourself, it becomes very stressful at times. And, um, for the women out there doing that, I look at you totally different. To my moms, thank you. Um, it really means a lot that you've been doing that for me your whole entire life. And um, a lot of the difference between me, you, me and you, Shay, a lot of people our age don't have kids 18, 19, 20, 22. You know, we've been fathers our whole entire life. We uh, sacrifice our most half of our childhood for our kids. And um, that's not an easy job. Um, and it's still difficult now. 
and it gets even more difficult the older they get. Um, I'm happy, though, at my age, I could go to a club with my son legally. He's 22, you know, um, have a little drink, talk to him and be professional about things, give him advice that he should have at that age that I could kind of guide him with, you know? Nice. Um, no, that's a fact. Now I see them on the I see them on the gram with you with the sweatsuits and the jackets. You know, yeah. you hit me, he, he gonna hit me up, say I got a sweatsuit for you. Oh, let's talk about the jacket. No jackets oh. and the sweatsuits. Fire. Okay, so are they designing them with you? Because I see that they actually walking them into shops. You know, you got them working with you too, which I gotta say that's good. Of course they designing everything with me and John Sebastian. Um I got them hands on with everything because you know they're the future. And they know what's going on. Um, right. I make mine a little totally different with John's help, of course. Um, so I could kind of customize it for older, for older generation men, you know, so it still looks sleek and um and hip, you know, at the same right. time. Right. That's nice, that's nice. Now where, where can they where can they pick these things up at? Um, John Sebastian Department.com. It's it's all over. It's all over. Um, it's on Instagram. It's on Facebook. Um, celebrities are starting to post it. But if you want to get it direct, JohnSebastianDepartment.com. Nice, nice. All right, so now, when you're in the store, you see the, uh, tell them thou sent you. When, when people see you say, tell them thou sent you. What's the slogan? Can you explain the slogan? Tell them thou sent you? Yes. So tell them thou sent you is basically for you to understand that my word is guaranteed for you to know that this is trusted. So, so you're like an official I'm, stamp. Official stamp. Ah, so if I, like I send you, no, I need you to explain this to me. Because we were in here, B, so Hirsch, we was like, okay, we like what's going on, but we like, we trying to see what is the concept behind tell them thou sent you? So I see what it is now. So basically, keep it coming on this show and you saying, can I hear it? Tell them thou sent you yes. is officially like stamping the dirty You're side. Like, you stamping yes. the show now. Officially stamping the dirty side. Yes. If you I like need, that. I if like you that. need credibility in these streets, Get with the dirty side. Okay. And please don't send yourself to jail. Because a lot of people out here sending themselves to jail. Because the dirty side is going to go viral. So do not send yourself to jail. Got you. Okay. I like that. Okay. So tell them Dow sent you. Thank you for, for giving us the official code sign of the, of the Dow sent you. But let's talk about that for a second. So let's say I own a sneaker store. Yeah. Dow comes in there. He holds up the sneaker. Tell him thou sent you. That's like the stamp saying like these are certified fire or certified like this is what social media should be pushing. This is where you need to go get that product. These are the people you need to go see when you go get that product. And when you do show up there for that discount or for them to show you respect and love, you make sure you tell them Dow sent you. And if anything happens when you show up there, you come back and you tell Dow, and I'll take care of it. Got you. Okay, so basically, you're like an official stamped coupon. A hundred percent. You oh, know, Shay, Shay, a lot of like people it. don't know this, Shay. A like lot of it. people don't know this, Shay. And I don't tell anybody this, but... My name Thousand, I got the name Thousand from one of the realest people that ever came from Brooklyn. Yeah. Sin Baby. That's crazy. That, that I met through you. Sin. You talking about Fat Sin? Fat Sin gave me the name Thousand. Yo, my nigga. So, okay, hold on. Let's bring Remember when we was going to Miami? 100%. Now, for the people Fat that want to know, gave me the name Thousand. Because let me break it down to the people who Sin is now so they know. Sin is our friend who was signed to Timberland. 
Timberland had a record deal with Timberland back in the 90s. He was down with Rough Riders. He's a goon. He'll tie you up. Bottom up. The biggest, one of the biggest goons from Brooklyn. His brother <laughs> is Haitian Jack. He gave me the name Thousand. Yo, I didn't know that, my nigga. Yo, and for you to say that, like that, a nigga like him gave you that name? That's crazy. Because he is one of them dudes. I didn't know that, Thou. That's crazy. That's, that's official. All right, so. Remember, everybody was calling me Thousand Air back then. Sin said, every time I see you, you by yourself. I'm not calling you Thousand Air. Your name is Thousand. You always by yourself. He's a fact. He's a fact. He said your name is Thousand. Word. Yo, and you know what? That name, I like that name better. The Thou, Thousand. Word and rule. <laughs> Shout out to Sin, man. Rest in peace, Sin. That's a Rest fact. Rest in peace, Sin, man. I love you, boy. 100%. You know? <laughs> Yeah, he always kept us on our toes. He always yes, he kept did. us on our toes. Yes, he did. And you know what? I get mad that I didn't I didn't I didn't go to the funeral, my, my dude. I couldn't. I couldn't, man. I couldn't. And I, I, I didn't, didn't know how we and Sting got there. That was my boy, my dude. He probably would have he probably would have been smiling. I ain't gonna lie to you. Yo, son, let me tell you. The funny thing is, is that. The nigga, yo, he was just a terror out in the streets, but he just was never like that with me. You know never. what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that's facts. That's facts. That's facts. That's so facts. facts. Rest in peace, Sin. All right, so. And, and, and that's what I'm talking about, Shay. And that's what I'm talking about. If you stamp the right way, he respects you so much, he respected me in tone. Facts. Mm hmm Word. 100%. Yeah. No, because I like that. Tell him Thou sent you the stamp. That stamp is, I was trying to figure out what, what was going on, but now I'm seeing it, and I see. You know, I like it. Okay, so, the places that you've been that you've been stamping, how did that come about? Uh, well, it started with my kids. Um, they wanted to just go places, and we made a bet that I could start going viral um, with short videos and stuff like that. And, um, you know, it got pretty successful. People was just DMing me, chiming in, saying that they loved the videos. Uh -huh. um, so after a while, I started, you know, thinking, hey, you know, the places that we go to, we got to make sure it's official for us, you know, and talk to the people there and get people on the videos with us. And then, um, you know, it, it's pretty good. And um, people have been asking me to bring it back along with the motivational videos. So I think I'm going to start doing that next week. And get some of those going as well. Got you. Got you. Nah, great, great concept. Great idea. And I like the fact that you're doing it with the family. That makes it even better. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we got it. We got to create um, generational wealth. You sort of um, giving me like the Dame Dash vibes. Like you trying to teach your kids to be independent, get their own businesses, and do their own thing. Uh, I'm going to tell you one thing. Dame Dash... Um, I don't know him personally, but if you see this, Dan, you motivate me every day. Um, but one thing I would say is the world is soft. So I can't go as hard as Dane Dash did in the 90s, but the world ha has gotten soft. And um, Dame is still going with the 90s vibe. You know what I'm saying? I can't go with that. I got to go with what's going on today. You know what I'm saying? So I want to be Dame Dash, but in the 2020 four version. I don't want to be Dame Dash. I want to be th tell them Thou sent you in the 2024 version, but the similarities should be there. Got you. You know what I would like to do with you? I, I've been, I don't know if you've ever seen these things on um, YouTube um, when like Charleston White is with like 20 females with like a white background. You ever seen that? Yeah, I've seen that. I've seen okay. That. I would like to do something like that with you. You know why? Yeah. Because that's like tell them thou sent you. And people like watching those things, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. The girls yeah. walk out, they have like little questions for the for the tell them thou sent you. Yeah. And like if the girls whack, we tell them get them out of here. If she's hot, we tell her tell them thou sent you, we keep them. That's just for the ratings, man. You know what I mean? I would love to do something like that with you. What do you think about Charleston White? 
I think Charleston White is uh, way more educated than a lot of people think. Um, I think that sometimes you got to go about it the wrong way to get a message across. And sometimes you got to go about it uh, the way that he's going about it, uh, which is completely the wrong way. But the message when I seen that interview with Cam was kind of strong and positive. But um, people do things for the spotlight. It's very, it's very, it's very hard to find somebody that's humble enough and gets and gets the job done that doesn't need the credibility from the spotlight. And some people that jump out the window just for a million views. You know, I don't need it. I don't need it that much. You know, I'll and back to what you were saying about with the women and something like Ch Charleston White. I'm down to do something like that as far as as long as it's motivating people. Yeah, no, that's I, what I'm saying. I would like to have them come out with questions like, like, I would like to have a bad chick walk out or even, even some whack chicks too. It doesn't matter. Just something that they walk out and be like, yeah, you know, I got a successful business. I cook hamburgers. And then we show them like a scene of them at their shop working. And then you look at them and they look good and their business is right. Tell them thou sent you or get them out of here. Yeah, I you like that I mean? idea. That's so actually a good that. idea. You know what I mean? That's you can do that now. Idea. Come to LA, we do that because those things are getting ratings. They bring in Charleston White, even though Charleston White got them sitting on their laps and all of that. I don't know if we have to go that far, but I, you know, all we even have to do is show like that. But I would like to do something like that, which you would tell them thou sent you because I like 100%. that concept, bro. I ain't gonna hold you. 100 percent 100 percent Charleston White. Charleston White, I like him. You know, I, I like him for, for what he is. I don't like the way that uh he says certain things about certain people. That's not, you know, that's not how you go about things. Um, you can't be positive and negative at the same time. You can in certain situations, but you can't when you're dealing with your people. Right. <laughs> now you're right. Now I like Charleston White too, man. I'm not mad at him, man. He's just, he do go a little bit overboard, but hey, you know, like, you know, these guys are not famous for a reason. They're famous because they're willing to jump off the cliff. That's just that. Yeah. It's just that. Yeah. <laughs> the and, and, and jump. Some niggas ain't willing to bungee jump. Here's the difference between us and them. We gonna bring back the real. The real. We don't gotta jump off a cliff. Facts. We just gonna say what people need to hear and understand. That's a fact. And we're gonna also show motion behind it. Hundred percent. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Yeah. So, what you think, man, about all these allegations, man, going down? Since you're from Mount Vernon, I feel we can ask you this, man. What's up with these allegations going down with Puff Daddy, man? Uh, you know, you think these things are true? Think these things are fugazi? What you know? What what's going on, man? You know, I am the media, man. I try not to go too hard on Puff because he is from the nine one four. You know, but I do like to give the page some. I mean, I mean, you following the page, you see a lot of the stuff that goes up. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't want nobody yeah. to think that I have a personal or anything against Puff Daddy because I don't. Puff Daddy's one of the greats. He's from the town. You know what I mean? I kind of want to say he's my boy, but I never met Puff in my life. So I'm just giving the people the news that they, you know, that they're hearing anyway. You know what I mean? I didn't do this. You did these things, Puff. So I'm just, oh. just asking you if you think these allegations are true against Puff Daddy. I'm, I'm going to be 100% honest with you, Shay. This is a question that I would love to stay away from, but I'm gonna add, I'm gonna be real with you about everything. All right. How long have you been watching the presidency in the United States of America since you was a child, right? Yeah, no, I agree with you. You feel like they're trying to throw no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. I'm gonna get back to Puff. Just just answer these questions. And it's the reason why I'm answering these questions is to all get back to Puff. How long have you been? seen presidents run for in your life your whole entire life correct my whole life okay so this year isn't it kind of weak isn't it like you don't really see it as much who are the two you know the two candidates that's running but are they promoting it as much no because because it, it seems like something's gonna happen and nobody wants to waste their money on running for something that might not be there for them to run for. Right. 
So okay. you see it, it, it could be coming down to an end period. Okay. So now let's get back down to Puff Daddy. Puff recently has been saying black this, black that, and even is calling himself brother love. Puff has been trying to get the black race to get more together so we could build a stronger environment for our children. Recently, he's been doing this, correct? Right. Okay. The one thing that white America hates the most is to see black people come together. As soon as Puff started to talk that kind of stuff, here goes these cases. You're right. And no one else is paying attention to this. Everybody else is quick to point their fingers at Puff, just like the presidential election. No one is paying attention to what's really going on. And this is why I'm changing from being the guy that we've previously spoke about to the guy that I am now, because they are blinding us. And we all are paying attention to the things that they are blinding us with instead of what the, really is going on. 100%. Okay. So a black man that's a billionaire with his own media company and is preaching black people get together is painting his jet black, is calling himself brother love. They can't have that. That's crazy. Anything that they can do to destroy that, they will. And the first thing for them to do is turn your own people against you because none of us is wise enough to understand what the fuck is really going on. Excuse my language. 100%. No, you're good. This is YouTube. You're fine. 100%. Okay. Yeah. Nah, you're right, man. I was just trying Cassidy to get down to the husband is a white man. The perfect people to pick. You're right. You're right. Yeah, man. I hope Puff can make it through this, man. You and know. they did the same thing to Bill Cosby. And they did the same thing to OJ. And they're going to keep doing the same thing to all of us. It's very scary that knowing that being a black man in America, that at some point they're going to do anything to take it back from you. They're doing it to Kanye in your face. Nah, you're right. You're right, Pay man. attention, please. Please My, pay attention. I like this talk. This is what, this is what we're here for. Yeah, right, man. So yeah. I like this talk. So, so, yeah, so, you know, I wanted, I wanted to go back to the uh, Puff Daddy thing because Puff Daddy, you know, on the, I just wanted to make it clear once again for the people out there, this is not kill Puff Daddy time. It's not. Nah, and, it's and, not. And, and, oh, and also for the ladies out there that are uh, um, making the allegations and possibly had something done to them, I'm not saying that it didn't happen and I'm not judging anybody. I'm just saying the timing of it and um, what's really going on with our community and the people behind it is kind of um, scary. So to anybody out there that's involved or um, has a role in it, um, I'm sorry that you're going through it. And it's a dramatic situation I can't speak about. And I totally feel sorry for you about that. But as far as the media and everything else is concerned about bringing down a black man. I just feel like uh, the timing of it is is very, very critical. Yes. Yes. I agree. I agree. Yeah, that's why I was saying this is not kill Puff Daddy season. This is, you know, a lot of it. You know, I'm even seeing, you know, like athletes and actors, you know, you know, a lot of people, you know, they doing like little jokes on it and things like this and you know, posting. It's just news that people are putting out there, but the real facts are that, you know, a lot of these people that are probably posting these things, they don't want to see Puff Daddy go under. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to see him lose everything he done work for from, you know what I mean? Because that's, that's one thing that I don't want them to take from him. I don't want them to take 
the legacy and the money from him because let's keep it real. You know what I mean? Let's be honest, man. For a person like me to say that, you know, Puff Daddy didn't start it off, he definitely did. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm coming up in the game as a young teenager. That's all I'm hearing is bad boy records. Yeah. He's going down the shaped, east. They Puff shaped a the, lot. Puff went to war with Suge Knight, my nigga. Yeah, he shaped. You he know shaped, what I mean? We don't want Puff going to jail. He's really like our, our, our hip hop hero for our culture. Yeah, he he shaped a lot. Um, it's it's just sad, man. At some point, they 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 gotta discredit you. They gotta try to discredit you. Um, I'm sorry for the situation for everybody. Like I said previously, and Puff, man, keep going with the music. Come outside, man. We all know what's really going on. The people that's awoke. That's a fact. That's a fact. Yeah, man. So what you thinking about these? Uh, is, is tell them thou said you're going to get out there for these NBA playoffs? Of course, man. The <laughs> other day I went to the Clippers <laughs> game with my son. Tickets. Tell them thou sent you. Yeah. The was goody. With the sweatsuits yeah. on, sitting front row, shades on. Nice. I'm turning it up. I'm turning it up. I got my first um placement ad yesterday too in a commercial. So I'm I'm turning it up. You know, hopefully, hopefully it, it, it'll get there soon. Shay, if you turn on the TV, I'm right there. Yeah, because you know, before we you know, we actually sat down and did this interview today, you know, we was a uh, you know when I hit you up, yo, where you at? I see the wind blowing. I said, Yeah, where you at? He said, I've been walking around. How is it living in LA coming from, you know. Mount Vernon, New York, that's a big change. You know, they moved from Mount Vernon maybe to the city, Jersey. I think it took it all the way to the West. Where we, let's talk about that. Uh, it's, a, it's a different pace, more laid back, but New York is where my heart is at. I go, I go to New York at least once every two months. Um, LA is just slower, but, but at the same time, faster. Can't really explain it, but Different culture, different lifestyle. I love That's it. Okay. I love it. I love it. I love it. That's I love okay. both. I love both cities. I love both cities. There's things that you can get from one, you can't get from the other. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. So, are, I mean, are you still a Knicks fan or are you a Lakers fan? Or Dodgers, I'm always, Yankees, a, I'm always a Knicks fan. I'm always and, a Knicks fan. Always, always a, a Knicks, Knicks fan. fan. Always a Knicks fan. So how is that living in L.A., being a Knicks fan? Because you know these guys out there in L.A., man. They'll, but I love LeBron. They they'll kill you I love LeBron. Can, okay. okay. I'm not so a Lakers they, fan, but I love LeBron. Okay, so that's good. So you, you got something to cheer for with the Lakers. Yeah. But the Knicks are doing well. The Knicks are doing great. Hopefully we make it to the, to the uh, championship this year. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, the are doing I don't well. think nobody in the East can stop us. Boston, maybe. Nah, if, if your man um, Jalen do what he did last year and get help from one other player, we'll be out. <laughs> yeah, we just need help from one, one, one person got to step up. That could be Julius Randle. Oh, man. I was... you, get, you don't see it? Nah. That's I a fact. Got, I don't think I got hope for him. In the playoffs, not in the playoffs, at least. Yeah, he like he like a he like a regular game scorer type of dude. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. what you think about all of this? Uh, you know, in the game with all of these females coming to the game now, coming out the woodwork. You think it all started with this uh, whole uh, what's what's my man's name? Uh, Go Cosby thing. From there, it all just say, yo, it, 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 there's a life in this. I figured that since the Bill Cosby thing, they said, you know what? We could run this play back one more time. And they picked Puff? They picked Puff because Puff, I, like I previously explained to you, he was talking this black people stuff. Black this, black love, black this. Let's build a black own our, our own black economy. And he's the one with the biggest voice. Yeah. That's he crazy. Reach, he can reach the most people. But you say, can, can, can we flip this to interview for you for one second? Of course. 
What's good? A lot of people don't know that you were one of the hottest people with the music at one point. Well, yeah, I mean, I try to let them know a little bit. You know, I brought it up a few things, showed them a few plaques, showed them a few things, showed them a suit, you know, a few, you know, a pop's book if they want to, you know, under read on everything and go get it on Amazon, get him some books. So, you know, do some things like that. I've, I put little things out that in the air like that. But, you know, for me, it was like I lost love for the game from just all of the whole what it takes to, to at that time to get to where you at. It's just too much dick riding and I can't do it, man. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's yeah. too much. It's like it's just it's it's like you have they even want you to dick ride in your sleep. And I just can't do it, man. It got it got it got over it got overwhelming, bro, for me. Yeah. That's why yeah. I really don't talk about it too much. Because it wasn't as fun as I thought it would be. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? If it was like now, I would have had fun with it. Like when you could just upload a song when you want, do your thing, you don't gotta worry about nobody, book your own shows. You know what I mean? The independence now is a little bit more easier. Back then, independent is too hard to do. It because was, they was really hard. with the uh, you know, they had the they was really the gatekeepers were really up there. Yeah, it was it was hard. Um, and then we got to a point of life because you know I was with you for a long time in my life as well. We got a point to a life where we was doing better things than the rappers. They of was, course, they that's, was our two leaders. Yeah, that's what I mean. So it's like you know, that's why the this whole platform is here because I want to help the niggas that you know get to the top. I know what it takes. Like, I know you guys are sick and tired of running around chasing these goofies, sick and tired of talking to these guys, man. You know, and they, you know, and they, and you know, and, and what's crazy is that now that I got the platform moving, it's like I'm talking to these guys even more now. Like I'm talking yeah. about the industry people. I couldn't yeah, talk yeah. to them before. Yeah. Now I'm a platform that I, I can have a conversation with you. Yeah. That's nasty work to me. Yeah, yeah. But you know what it is, though? You you realize that um, they need you now, you know? So exactly, now, but that's yeah. foul because, you know, I was just trying to, you know, I have a passion for music, man. It's in my blood. That's why I say you got to read my father's book. Like, you know, like I see y'all running around chasing these, you know, celebrities, kids, and all of these stuff. They don't even have no talent. And you guys putting them on in front of everything and doing all of this stuff and everything like that and doing all of that. And I just felt like niggas should have paid us a little bit more homage. You know, like, like it's not our fault. Like, our father's, you know, 10 million seller, you know, there's no Instagram. There's no YouTube. Right. I don't know who they are. But real talk is the niggas that I'm... It's like I'm talking to niggas that that never even sold past two million records. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. I can't get you to help me and you don't have no plaques. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, I have the blacks right here. I'm sitting there right here. They're behind us on the show every single day. He's a, they, we're getting royalty checks for life, my nigga. Yeah. The family will receive yeah. royalty checks for the rest of our life. So, well, you, yeah. know, they, you know, they, our business was done right. So it, 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 just, it just hurts me sometimes that the people that I look for help, you know, now that I'm older, I see that, yo, I shouldn't even been talking to these people at all. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You know what it is, though? They took me a long time to realize this, though, Shay. Um, when your potential is greater than other people's potential, they, they got to hold you back. They, know they got to hold you back. Push, you're going to go way over, way, way above that. Yeah, they got to hold you push. back. Yeah, because you go That's why I like, that's why I said I want to do platform work, because that is shit for niggas that want to do independence. If you're an independent artist and you want to buzz, I'm right here. Let's work. Yeah. You know, and we've been getting that. So, man, like I said, last week we was in Brooklyn. You know, my man took care of business. Went out there. You know, your man Jay Class know who they are, man. You know, the Dawson brothers. You know, they were yeah. signed. They were signed to Clark Kent. I do. You got to, you know, I met them in Quad Studios. I said that in the interview. And you know what? A lot of people don't know. And, you know, fuck it. We on YouTube. Let's not put this out there. And that, that day that I was out in Brooklyn and I was explaining to all him when I interviewed Ray, I said, Ray, I met you. First time I met you was in a crazy situation. 
We was in Quad Studios. The same yeah. studio where Tupac got clapped. This is yeah. the same studio. And and this is like 1999. So Tupac probably, that bullet was fresh there. That bullet was probably there for only like three, four years. Yeah. Remember? I think yeah. Tupac got clapped there in 95. Yeah. I'm there in 99. Right? I'm yeah. there in 99. Yeah. I'm there in 99, Dow. And I'm upstairs with your man, Sammy Z. Sammy Z. I'm with Sammy Z. Go up on the third floor. I go to McDonald's. He didn't, I didn't tell him this in the interview, but this is the fact. I go to McDonald's. I go up, uh, get something to eat. Nobody knows me. And I'm a new artist. And at that time, they got us in a uh, uh, magazine. But they got the van riding around Mount Vernon. Chewbacca, all of that. I don't Chewbacca. know if you're there. You seen that man before? Yeah, of course. It seems to be outside Sam's. Or, I mean, Sue's. Yes, me and, me and Chewbacca was on these on his sides. Yeah. And I go to McDonald's. And when I go to McDonald's on the way out, on the way back into the quads, I run into um 3LW. And me and her get in the elevator, the light-skinned one, and, her, and the little dark-skinned one. We go to the second floor. 15 minutes later, they sitting in the room, we on the couch, chilling, listening to music. We were vibing out, having a good time. And then I went to the bathroom and I ran into Ray. And Ray said, I mean, I mean, I ran into Jay Class and he was with Ray. And he said, yeah, we're on the second floor. We heard three LWs up here. So we said, no, Jay Class. You know, we think coming up. They three LWs on the third floor. So Jay, uh, Class was on the third floor. It's like, you know we downstairs with Clark Kent. Yeah. I go downstairs. I see him, Clark Kent. He got Jay Nam, all the whole group in them, all in like three rooms recording. Crazy, my nigga. Word. That's what I said. Like, this part of the game is all us, man. You know what I mean? Uh, we had uh, a narrative. narrative. Now, give, we just had to just give them the, you know, the news on everything, man. I think they are, they are tell them down sent you is going to go far. You know what I mean? Yeah. Nobody has an official stamp page that, mm -hmm. you know, you might have to start going worldwide to clubs, worldwide to restaurants, worldwide to basketball games, you know, worldwide to Dykeman, go to niggas' sneaker stores, go to niggas, you know what I mean? Niggas is going to want you everywhere. And, but you know mm -hmm. what? You Little do you know that I'm pretty sure you own it like that, but all of that comes with, you know, either a price or gifting. Yeah. I'm yeah. serious. No, no, 100%. Because it's not but promotion for the advertisement. Why wouldn't it? Yeah, 100%. You know 100%. what I mean? That's, 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 you know, that's. But what's your future plans, man? Now that you don't flip the interview and flip it on me and, you know what I mean? I went from the interviewer to getting interviewed. You know what I mean? That's the first time ever. I like that. I, I'll be honest with you. I'm piggyback off of your pops. Um, I got the book. Facts. You know, you know what I mean? Yo, Shay, what's wrong with you? What? The book is called What's Wrong With You? Nice. But I just threw the Shay in there to get your attention. <laughs> the book is called What's Wrong With You? It's going to stop. What's wrong with you? It's going to stop is, this for the door. What's wrong with me? Yeah, so what's wrong with you doesn't mean that something's wrong with you. It's just to let you know that what is wrong with you? You could do anything in this world that you could possibly do. When you look in that mirror, know that there's nothing wrong with you. So when I'm asked, I'm asking you a question. What's wrong with you as the person that you are right now? Now you're right. Nothing in the world. So now nah, let's like go that. out and let's get this shit done. Facts. I like that. <laughs> I like and that. that's all going to be in the book. So when is that going to drop? The book will drop sometime late summer. I'm trying to do it for my birthday, August 14th, for the release. Um, trying to figure out how to make myself and everything else kind of saturate the internet. So by the time that happens, the book should do good. Yes, it should. Yes, it should. Yes, it should. So, um, right now, Greenberg is killing the internet. Yeah. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you know, I spent a little time up in Greenberg as well. Greenberg. You know, right yeah. now, 
No, but what made you say that? What made you say that? <laughs> you know, Shawnee them is doing their thing. You doing your thing. But, you know, Mikey doing his thing. You know what I mean? Isn't that I'm free to up there, and I'm going to join the gang now. You know what I'm saying? No, so, no, but listen, let me, I'm glad you said that because this is the funny thing. Greenberg has always been doing a thing. It's just that Greenberg is Greenberg. Yeah, yeah. Just look yeah. At, listen to the name, Greenberg. So you, you, yeah. you, you, you're not, you know, you're not even, who would think that? And the whole world has been to Greenberg, fam. Yeah. Everybody, you everybody got a story about Greenberg. Yes. Yo, son, let me tell you. You know how I many niggas from the Knicks got babies in Greenberg? Yeah, of course. Of I course. know like five of them. Of course. Of course. And you know what? It goes all the way back to the 90s. Because it starts with my man Suits. Johnny Newman was up in Greenberg. Back in the back of you in the early 90s. That's a fact. You know what I mean? Suits. What's yeah. up with Suits? <laughs> yeah. So Suits, say, motherfucker, you still owe me four grand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so wait. Hold on. You're right. Greenberg is buzzing, though. 100%. Shout out to Greenberg. Yeah, you're not for nothing, though. You met the Greenberg. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to tell you. I think my time was there. <laughs> me and Dave Allen was running through it. Facts. He said, check out. Yeah. yeah and, and jokes, jokes. And jokes, facts. And money. Facts. Uh, yeah, Swells was my dude too. Me and Swells used to go hard. Oh, you know Swells too? Yeah, me and Swells used to go hard. Oh, that's yeah. fam, hundred percent. Yeah, no, shout out to Big Greenberg, hundred percent. Yeah, I right, so man, top five. Tell them thou sent you moments. Uh, the first one has to be today, right now with you. Facts. Um, this is family, so of course. Uh, second one would have to be the other day with Odell Beckham. You know what I mean? He gave me some motivation and then uh, let me use his uh, place to do the video. Nice. Um, uh, him and my boy, they was having a conversation. Um, and my boy told him, you know, you always leave me when you go to the gym. And he told him, man, you here for the party. If you wanted to be for the gym, you would be there. And I said, man, damn, that's what a that's what a real friend would say to you, man. Like, if you want to come for you, you could just like you welcome to the party, you welcome to the gym. Facts. So that's that's just gonna show you what kind of person you are. You know, you want to yeah. be the person that's always at the party, or you want to be the person that's at the gym with me. And um, with my kids, you know, my kids, the Ice Spice moment was pretty good. I I, I like that one. I enjoyed that one. Um, I did a few that I really like, man. Two, two, two. Oh, the Freaky Snacks is really good. That kind of started it all. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I like that one. You know what I mean? You know, <laughs> you know I, now, I, are the I, kids I, giving I, you, are they giving you ideas to do? Yeah, they give me some ideas, of course. You know, I piggyback off of them all the time. They give me ideas, of course. Yeah. I want to show you the front of these sweatpants, too, because I know you, like, you know, you you really good with the drip. No, I look at all that type of stuff. Hold on, you, you got to move, move up some. Yeah, so I can see it. Yes, yes. Yes, those are fire. See the ball, and you got a coat. My sneakers are kind of dirty right now. I was in the field for Now, what years. size is that suit right there? This is a large right here. See the back? Yeah, I'm going to need a medium. Yeah, I got you. Then the bold head, and then, of course, on the hood. Yeah, those are fire. Those are real fire. Now, how yeah. much do one of those suits run them? Uh, 160, 80 for the top, 80 for the bottom. Also, you could just get the bottom on the top. If you want to, but I think on the site right now, it's just uh complete but i told him he should just kind of break it just in case somebody just went in the top so hopefully they get that done this week no because the sweats are fire now are you gonna have the shorts yeah the shorts is coming um i believe april 1st oh yeah yeah well you know Shay baby tv we looking for 
You looking for a marketing deal, oh, man. You might have to join, man. Monday. I like those sweatsuits, man. Your package you know is going away Monday for you. They keep yeah. asking. They keep saying, yo, Shay, when the merch dropping? You always wear the hats. You always wear the sweaters, but nothing for sale. I'm like, yo, these are all products. Look, I, look let me show you. These are yeah. all. These are all. I can show you over. Look, my nigga, unlimited, unlimited, but unlimited. That one is fire. Unlimited hats. Look, unlimited hats. They want me to start selling them. Unlimited hats. I can't. I don't. These are all prototypes. These are people that send them to me. Yo, I can do your stuff. I can do this. I don't even know what to do with it. You know, like right now. I want to start selling merch. That's a fact. Yeah, yeah you got to. You got to get into the merch game. Um. I had a boy that's just been designing a lot of fire stuff. I just put my input on kind of where we should put uh, the boats at, you know, and uh, what kind. And um, it's been going good, you know. We so we right. so the jackets are amazing. Uh, you got to go to the website, johnsebastiandepartment.com. Check out the jackets, the fire. Um, yeah, I'll put that. I'll put that. On, I'll, I'll pin that on the page. All right, that's that's a fact. Definitely. Yeah, man. Uh, now, nah, man, you, de you definitely, this is definitely a good interview right here, man. You know, definitely where, it's, where it all started from. Um, Yeah, I feel like, you know, your your brand is going to be something that just depends on, you know, you say you're sitting in meetings and conversations with Odell Beckham, so it seems like you're in the right places, so you definitely got the right people behind you. It's just, you know, it's just, and you start fresh in the game, too, so you're definitely making moves. You're definitely making moves. I got to tell you that. Yo, Shay, man, uh, sky's the limit for us. If one hard year change your life, 2024 is the year that's going to change ours because nobody's going to outwork us this year. 100%. 100%. That's 1,000%. Yo, man, I'm really interested in them sweatsuits, man. I ain't going to hold you. I feel like right. you're going to make some money in those because I look at things in the suits and also the strings on the hoodies. They're, they look like good quality. I see it. You Good money. That, Good money. Mm -hmm. Worth every penny right there. And it's come heavy. On. Oh, come on, man. Not the one-time on, wash uh, you type know. Thing? Nah. That? Oh, Good. You know, Shay, you know when you put on certain hoodies, you get the little thing and all that on you. This is fresh. You know, yeah, you put the on my the head. There's no nice. Way. You know what I'm Not talking about? fire. Yeah. Not so, fire. So, you ain't got, you got any events, anything that you got coming up that they're going to... See this? Tell them Thou sent you at? Well, um, I got some a few things in the making. I don't really like to talk about it, but you see me on some stuff within the next week or two. Got you. And then I just got the commercial that just dropped, the um, Freebird commercial for the ball, man. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, I got no hair, but fortunately, I got the commercial. That's out there. And um, within the next two weeks, man, I got some stuff coming for you. Got you. All right, man. Yeah, good, Shane, good. thanks for having me. I appreciate no, it. No, we're man. not done, man. I want to I bring you back sometimes, too, because, you know, like I was telling my man Johnny the other day, you know, you had a good Shout, vibe, shout out to Johnny Cash, too, man. Uh, a lot Are you doing Johnny Cash? Ah, uh, man, I would, he brought me to Oompi House. Oompi yeah, that's his country. Oh, so you? Facts. He brought me to the projects. He brought me to Oompi House. Oompi rap for me. And uh, tone in his boxes for nine hours straight. That's crazy. That's crazy. Nah, OP, that's a fact. OP supposed to be on a platy next week, 100%. Wow. OP, if you see this, I came to your house one day with Johnny Cash. You had on a white t shirt and your boxes, nigga. And you <laughs> rap for nine hours straight, nigga. Yeah, that's him. He's a I said, you know, this nigga fuck. gotta make it. This yeah, nigga, he didn't even go get his pins, nigga. Fact. He just he 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 woke up and started rapping, nigga. Hundred percent. Shout out to Oom P, the BX. Hundred percent. All right, man. So yeah, man, we are gonna definitely get back up, man. We are gonna definitely, definitely, definitely get back up, man. Bring you on next week or uh, next month or something like that. Cause like I said, I like the way you are. Uh, you know your your opinions on, on on the game. You talk the game, man. You know the game. You know what I mean? Yeah. You came up in it. Yeah, Shay, man. Um, back in the days, me, you, we, 
we had a crew called Stay Lace. Stay Lace, we went out 30 days straight. I think we spent 100000 Uh We started that. We That's had exactly. NBA players taking pictures of us in the club. We had the Real Housewives with us and everything. You know, we can't go into deeper things. But at the end of the day, my life was as real as it gets. And I just want to tell everybody, you can do anything in this world that you want to do. Don't wait to the last moment to get it done. But sometimes you do because you might fuck up your blessings by getting it too early. Excuse my language, everyone. 100%. Because at the end of the day, like you say, you want it at the end, really. I'd rather get it at the end so I can live out the rest of my life comfortably. So 100%. Now it's time you made to it this it. far. We made it this far. <laughs> now it's time we to get it. Oh, that's a fact. Yeah, man. All right, man. So we Stay yes. love you, man. Thanks for everything. See you soon. 100%. Right? We talk and I'll see you soon, my guy. All right. All right.